The first time I saw Mark, he was playing uh, an acoustic guitar in a group called The Encounters at the college where he attended. And um, he just is, was such a nice looking young guy and very tan, was from Florida, and had long blonde hair and quite a dresser. And uh, I didn't think I had a chance because I was only 15. Um, I kind of waited for several months and got my opportunity to meet him. And then uh, he asked me out for a Coke after a basketball game and that was our first date. Mark and Diane dated about two years, and then they got married, and that was right after Mark's college graduation, but Diane's high school graduation. Mark robbed the cradle. That's right. <laughs> I think Mark and Diane would describe it as they were chasing after the world. Yeah, Mark was really successful with his business uh, in the insurance business, and he attracted the right kind of people because Mark was a leader. Uh, at that time, when we had both our girls, we moved to Houston, Texas, where Mark was given an agency there, and um, he did chase hard after the world trying to be successful. So I felt like a single parent for quite some time. There was an all-day Bible study, but it was being led by this guy that was one of the top salespeople in all of Houston. Mark's motive was to go because he thought it was a great chance to spend a day with this guy, but that day, God changed Mark. Mark went from running hard after the world to running hard after the Lord, and he would sit on the couch at night and just read his Bible, which was unusual. Usually it was sitting in front of the television is what he did before he got saved. And uh, he was like a dry sponge soaking up um, the, the Word, and uh, he did that and got into ministry activities, got involved in ministry. To me, one of the most amazing things, one of the most amazing testaments was a physical mark that he left at the house where they raised their girls. Right at the couch, Mark knelt every morning to pray, to pray for his girls, to pray for his wife. And when they moved out, those marks were there. God moved us from there to Memphis, and uh, we discovered Bellevue Baptist Church through the singing tree. And we had the opportunity to go on staff at Bellevue, and God made it abundantly clear that that's what we were supposed to do. And so we served there for 11 and a half years, and it was our joy to do that. We just got to know them. We started going to dinner every Sunday night after church. Tim and I have always sought out friendships, people that were older, um, and Mark and Diane were gracious uh, to be friends with us and spend time with us so we could see somebody that was a step ahead in life, um, doing life. Mark had shared with us that he was concerned that he had noticed some differences in his balance, uh, that things were a little off, and in a routine visit to his doctor, uh, some tests were done, particularly a CT scan that revealed that he had a diagnosis of a uh, condition called uh, multiple systems atrophy, which affects your nerve endings throughout the body, as well as your muscles, um, primarily your speech and your balance. And um, he was told that the life expectancy would be about seven years. Disease continued to progress. Many times, all of us would sit and talk and say, you know, you know, how, how's this going to match up? You know, what does the Lord really have in store? And I remember many times Mark and Diane talking about, well, we're going to do something that's not natural. We're going to learn to wait on the Lord. And I think all of us had a hard time really understanding what that really meant. Mark and I both used to teach. In fact, we used to teach in rooms next door to each other. And I think Mark and I would talk about how, you know, it's easy to teach a lesson. I can teach the lesson on this passage. But let me tell you, when I'm having to live what this verse is talking about, that's a lot harder. We as their friends could see the suffering. We could see the hurt but then we could see the perseverance. But then we could see the next phase, the character that God was building in them. Diane would, would frequently say, Mark just keeps saying, remember Romans 8, 28 is true. During this time that Mark had begun this, this journey with his health, the Lord had literally birthed the ministry in Diane. There have been many, many, many women that have learned how to be godly wives and, and godly mothers. And Mark spends much of his day preparing for discipleship. 
and to see him finish strong and press on to the end, speaking for the Lord, that's how, that's, that's how we want to finish. We've learned that God can be trusted in all things, and um, He has given us uh, peace, and He has given us laughter, uh, He has given us joy, and He's given us rest in the midst of what is sometimes heartache and pain. We've learned that He's faithful. There's not been one need that we had that God has not met. And uh, we have learned that He is our provider for all things. And, and that's been a beautiful lesson for us to learn, you know, because we, we thought it was Bellevue and we thought it was New England Life that we used to work for, but God is our provider. We are choosing to live each day um, for the Lord and to live it with joy and to try and enjoy it and to right. laugh, right? Right, right. <laughs> uh, together. And, um, uh, both of us have learned that marriage goes much deeper than um, one's uh, physical needs, than having a house, having children, uh, cars, uh, retirement plans. Uh, there's a lot more to marriage than those things. I think that what we would really choose um, to leave behind is um, a legacy of love, and then a legacy of faithfulness, and it would be God's faithfulness. And the condition that he is suffering with and what he's been through would bear out fruit in the lives of other people, just watching um, him walk through what God is asking him to walk through in this uh, situation. So uh, it would be love, faithfulness, and fruit.